morning once again and uh, welcome to BC315, the course on the life skills. And today we're going to continue discussing on conflict resolution. Even before we could begin with our session, can I request one of you all to please ask uh, Anyone you all can just unmute. Yes, thank you. Progress is happy for the way. Thank you for good day, beautiful time or just for this class, Father God. This time, Father God, as we are going to learn about the life skill, Father God, we ask you, Lord, more of your revelation, your understanding, Lord Jesus. And Father God, your word says, Lord Jesus, whatever we do, let it be in excellence way, Father God. We ask you, Lord Jesus, Father God, whatever ma'am ma is teaching us, Father God, let it be rooted in our heart, Father God, so that it will be helpful for today and for the future god we commit this time to your mighty hand and we submit all the students to you and father god in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you so let me share the powerpoint presentation so that we can continue to discuss on a few of the points that we were discussing on last week okay so we are from Point eight, right? Okay, point eight. Don't let anything personally affect you. So, is there anyone who would like to share on why shouldn't we take anything personal? Whereas we shared on few of the points in last class, we looked at use yes and statement so that we can avoid any misunderstanding. We can be very clear and don't point fingers during especially the time of conflict because that may trigger. The third we discussed, like, let the person explain themselves and actively listen. So it's always good for the other, I mean, all of us who is part of the conflict to allow them to share their point of view. And fourth, we we look at use I statement instead of you know pointing a finger at the other person. It's you it could say maybe I didn't understand you, but I should have understood. Okay, the fifth point we saw here is maintain a calm tone. Yes, no matter what's happening within this, the emotions are actually coupling in, but then it's always good for us to maintain a calm tone uh, because that can avoid many such conflicts we should be uh, then the sixth point we saw was look show a willingness to compromise or collaborate very important and seventh we discussed on don't talk behind people's back don't talk behind people's back so as we discussed on seven points let's continue okay looking into the other points and today we will start with eighth point which talks about don't take anything personal so why is that important in conflict resolution why is this skill very important for one to develop so that we don't take anything personal anyone from the class can unmute and share your point of view Anyone from the class, why should we not take anything personal? Do you think that may uh, that may affect us in our relationship with the other person? Yes, this is Charles. <clears throat> Hi, Charles. Um, yes, yes um, when you take something personal, that means you are you are putting yourself around yourself a hedge like uh, you are going to put a, a hedge around yourself so that nobody should do, enter in you are going to have you are going to to defend yourself now instead of uh, handling it well now you're going to start pointing fingers though you might not physically point the finger but the the internal part is show, is pointing finger to the other person 
because it is no longer a relationship it is now a, a self defense that's what i think thank you thank you thank you charles for sharing that is there anyone would like to add to what charles shared It can also be in an organization set up, in a workplace set up, or in a ministry set up. Every organization or a ministry may have certain policies. And now when we talk about the policies, it may not be very friendly or may not be very flexible to certain people. So a time of conflict or, you know, a, a customer may or uh, it can be a customer team member, it can be any person, may have a conflict, typically not with you as an individual person, but maybe uh, it may involve the policies that are involved. In. So in those circumstances, in that situation, let's not take something very personally, but allow that, okay, it's part of the policy, this is how we are going to edit, this is how we are going to talk and convince the person, but whatever the person, you know, during that uh, reasoning hour, during the time of discussion, the, per the customer or a team member would have said certain words that may not be very pleasant for the hearer or for the other person to receive it. But then it's always good for us to not to take it personal and leave it there so that your relationship with that person does not get affected. Okay, um, yeah, but then we will move on to the next point, nine, pay close attention to non-verbal communication. I think it is very important for us to pay attention to non-verbal communication in conflict resolution. Why do you think a body language or uh, emotional appearance of a person during this time is very important for the other person to make a note of it? Yes, let's go ahead, Charles. We have many answers coming from you. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, me, I am thinking that uh, a person can be might, as I said in the beginning, um, I said you might not physically point fingers, but when you are internally pointing fingers and non-verbal communication, it might be that that person might not be um, telling you internally, bringing out verbs or words, but now they are showing their internal communication via the non-verbal. So there is a need, a very, very sensitive need for one to look at the nonverbal uh, gestures and actions so that you are able to interpret them um, there and then so that you are able to know what to communicate next. I thank you. Thanks, thanks, Charles. Yeah, you're actually answered to the point. It's very important. In fact, it's very important during the time of conflict to have a person. It's always good, you know, than your uh, telephonic conversation. It's always uh, good for us to discuss on this conflict, something that is uh, involving a disagreement or some sensitive matter. It's always good for us to discuss with the person directly. Why? Because when we're discussing on certain matter directly, we get to see the person, we get to, uh, you know, um, be sensitive to the body language, the emotional, everything involved. So based on that, based on that, we can handle the situation better. So all these sensitive matters, it's always good for us to talk directly to the person because through uh, you know, a direct conversation, we can understand the non-verbal communication through the body language, the emotions that has been expressed over the face. And in that, you can avoid much more conflict or any kind of other misunderstanding. 
you know, even if a person, you know, on a, on a day to day conversation, maybe something has disturbed them, the word of yours, or action of yours may have caused some kind of disturbance to that person. And when you just say hi to that person, and how are you? The person may respond to you saying, I'm fine, but not actually giving that expression out. When you know there's something wrong with this person, then you can sit, talk, discuss, and bring a clarity so that the environment, the atmosphere where you work, where you serve, is very comfortable and transparent, and it is in a very healthy manner. So nonverbal communication, even in conflict resolution, is very important, and it is a skill that we observe. We need to observe all these things. Tenth, we look at is prioritize resolving the conflict over being right. How do we prioritize resolving the conflict over being right? Anyone from the class? Anyone from the class? Okay. It can be personally. Okay, definitely the conflict is not just between one person itself, but it also involves the other person or the team. So how do we resolve it over being right? So when we are trying to resolve a problem or issue, we might need to take a step back to access the whole situation, how we can peacefully handle it, how we can peacefully handle it. We may be, uh, uh, we may be right, or maybe our opinions may be uh, right or strong enough to defend the other person and make the other person understand and prove that he is wrong, or prove the team is wrong. But what is benefit? What does uh, what does it benefit at the end of the day in proving the other person that they are wrong and losing the relationship? Sometimes it's all actually it is good for us to just step up and say, "Okay, fine, sorry about it. Let's see how we can resolve it. What do you think may be right to do?" Just hear out the other person, and you know, by hearing out the other person, we are making that person feel okay fine i'm ready to compromise i'm ready to uh, you know uh, to go in peace because it is very important the scripture says one of the scriptures says i put up some scriptures here okay i'm trying to change romans 12 18 says if possible so far as it depends on you live peaceably with all very important if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. So when we see peace with others, what involves compromise and what sacrifice and what sacrificing and come away, give away your pride, your ego, let uh, let's clothe ourselves with humility and making the other person okay, fine, you're right, let's go with what you are. So what's important here is peace this is something very important for us to look in yeah so the next point we can see so yeah just know when to apologize and forgive when do we apologize and forgive When do we apologize and forgive? Ma'am, when we acknowledge and identify our, our side of uh, being wrong, then we can uh, apologize. And forgiveness can be uh, extended based on 
our hearts that we want to reconcile. So if we are willing to reconcile, then extending forgiveness or seeking forgiveness both works well. Yes, yes. Thanks, Abhi, for sharing that. Yes, actually, it is a very uh, one of the hardest thing for anyone. I am not too sure. I can't say anyone. Some of them or the Lord have practiced this to say sorry, but then otherwise, it's not a very easy thing for everyone to accept their mistake and say sorry. No, to it actually takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of strength. Uh, you know, to actually realize, realize that okay, it's wrong on my side. I should have been more understanding. You know, I should have not allowed the situation to come in the first place. So, uh, conflict can involve many other areas that we need to look into. So when we look into, as the scripture said, as much as possible, strive to have peace with everyone. Why do you think uh, it is important? The scripture says it is very important for us to have peace around us. Why do you think it is important for us to have peace around our, our circumstance, our life, in our workplace, in our family? It can be anyone, but we need to have peace. Why do you think that is very important? If there's a conflict, if there's always anger, hatred, ego, pride, things around this, there's no God's nature there. You can't expect God to bless if you're holding on something to unforgiveness. If you're holding on to something like hatred or unable to forgive another person, you cannot experience God's blessing. You know, that's the reason the scripture says, like, as much as possible, strive to have peace around you. You see, in the book, uh, in the Old Testament, we see when God, um, you know, uh, uh, allowed Solomon to build the temple of God. God gave Solomon peace with all his enemies around him. Why do you think? Because there was a project, there was a work, there was a purpose that God intended Solomon to do, to build God's temple. For that, he needs to have peace so that he can receive the purpose of God, the blessing of God, the, what, the purpose that God has called him to do, he can fulfill it. Even his enemies, God made it as a man. Uh, God made even the enemies to be friends with them. And they also blessed him with the material that is needed to build the temple. So this is not just for Solomon, but it is even in our time. Even in our time, God can give peace to the people around us. God can, you know, make the enemy to be a blessing to us. This is what the scripture says, that I shall make your enemies to be in peace with you. When we have the favor of God, even our enemies will be our friends, will be at peace with us. And also, it is very important for us to say, I'm sorry, forgive me. And be at peace with everyone so that we do not allow the pride or the ego anything to hinder our blessing from God. It is important for us. Okay. Yeah. And also the scripture says, do not allow the sun to go down. Anyone would like to complete that scripture? Did I make a note of that? Yeah, I have not. Just give me a minute when I get the scripture. The sun go down on when you, angry, when you are still angry. Yes, yes. When you still do not allow the sun to go down on your anger. Yeah. So, yes, as much as possible, we need to have peace with people around us.
in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 talks about be angry, sin not, let not the sun go down upon your anger. Means don't carry that conflict to the next day. Try to solve it within the day itself. This is a major problem. So being angry is an emotion. But what comes out of it is what causes sin. Be very careful. So God gives us that nature to control our emotion. He gives us uh, the wisdom how to handle the situation. So we need to handle it in a peaceable manner. Why do you think it is important for us to handle the situation in a peaceable manner? It's very important for us to handle the situation in a peaceful manner because we don't allow the enemy to take in charge of us. We don't allow the conflict to grow as much as possible. Have peace. Let the other person be right and let him go. That's okay. Just humble yourself. Allow the Lord to work in hand. Allow the Lord to be your defender. Let the Lord take up this battle. Just leave it. In time, the Lord will make the other person understand. Lord will give the clarity and the understanding to the other person. So let's allow the battle, you know, let's allow God to handle that battle. God to handle that conflict. And you'll be in peace. Just say sorry, apologize. By we apologizing, we will not become small. By we apologizing, we will not become wrong. The other person may take that as an advantage and say, hey, he asked sorry. That means he's accepting his mistake. The other person may take that apology as an advantage and he can boast and talk what he wanted or how he wanted situation to look in favor or in his advantage. But that's okay. Many times even Jesus was humiliated when he was on this earth. He never took every case to defend himself. He just allowed the time to answer and he walked away. Sometimes certain battles are not worth fighting, not worth defending, not worth arguing. Just let it go. Let it go and let the Lord handle. So this is something that we need to put in practice as a child of God. So focus on the conflict at hand and not and not past ones. Very important. Let's look at immediate what's happening. It's always good not to bring the history, the past into the present. So this is some uh, some of them consider some scholars consider that you know to have this forty eight hour rule. If a conflict emerges or there's something that bothers each of us, that we need to look out only what happened in that forty eight hours and how we can resolve it. We should not look into a conflict, how we are going to blow it as big as it possible. As a leader, we, our focus should be how we can resolve the conflict, how we can bring end to this misunderstanding, how we can break this argument and put a full stop to it. And don't bring anything from the past into it because it may only land up becoming big. So as much as possible as leader, see how we can handle the situation wisely. And if at all we need to address anything, see to it that you're addressing based on the event that is taking place right now, the conflict right now, not on something that happened a year or a month later or something you know, sometime back than bringing that into just have to happen what the conflict and how we resolve it, how we can avoid it so that this does not repeat again. Thirteenth, we see that used humor when appropriate. Why do you think humor is necessary? But again, it says use humor when appropriate, only if it is a need. Let's not make fun of uh, humorous when the other person is concerned about certain matter. Only if it is needed to make the situation a little light, we can use 
humor. That's when even our non-verbal communication matters, our body language, the whole situation, the emotion. Based on that, you to make the situation go light, we can use humor. But then if it is a serious, intense, let's not make the other person concerned humorous because that may lead again to another conflict. So depending on the situation, on the circumstance, on the uh, on the whole issue, we need to think how we can handle it in a better way. Okay, but if it is a light matter and to make the other person comfortable and the others, you know, feel uh, okay, <clears throat> it is actually good to make the situation like to use little humor so that. You know, uh, there's a solution, everyone are feeling comfortable and there's no more misjudging, misunderstanding and everyone appreciates each other and make a big problem into a small, uh, you know, uh, nothing, just like a bubble, just use a human and solve the problem and move on with it. You know, something very light. Fourteenth, we see, remember the importance of the relationship. Very, very important. Conflict is just an instant, it's just an emotion, just a concern, okay, of that minute, of that event. But what lasts long is the relationship. So whenever we are addressing a conflict or we are in the situation, our mind should be on much bigger thing. That is, our relationship matters. At the end of the day, a relationship should not get affected. So how can I handle this situation so that a relationship is not affected? So keeping a relationship in mind, it's very easy for us to handle any conflict. No matter how big or how intense it could be, just because you want to maintain a good relationship with this person, you will try as much as possible to solve that problem instantly. And you refuse to remember that again, so that your uh, your relationship with that person does not get affected on a longer run. Is there anyone else who would like to share on use humor or remember the importance of the relationship? Anyone from the class can unmute and talk about it. Why is it important? And how can handle the situation to retain the relationship? Can I share? This is Charles. Yes, yes, Charles. Please go ahead. I'm talking about the relationship. You know, the relationship comes from far. So one emotion can kill the whole relationship that you have built for many years. So it is very, very vital for you to keep in mind, in fact, it should be on, on your fingertips to remember the relationship, how it has come, how you have built it. And then with that one single emotion or two of them that are likely to kill everything. So when you are antennae are uh, up and you are aware of the relationship, its strength, its base, and everything, then you are able to, to handle the conflict in relation to the relationship so that you will protect it and maintain it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for sharing that. Yes, very important for us to maintain it. Yeah. Anyone else would like to add? before we could move on to next. Anyone from the class here? Abhinay, Siddhant, Asha, Komu. Nisha, would you like to share? Nisha, Peter? on any of the points that has touched you that is very important in conflict resolution. Abraham, Mankey, 
anyone. Okay, we will move on to the next point in conflict resolution. Okay, we will look into the next one, Thomas Kilman model of conflict resolution. So it describes this model describes the five strategies for addressing conflict. So the five strategies lies on the two axes. What are those? Assertive and cooperative. Assertive and cooperative. So each of these strategies it ranges between the assertiveness and unassertiveness, and cooperative and uncooperative so there's no strategy is right or wrong so let's take time to look into these because each one has set a few boundaries so we need to look into what are the boundaries that we can uh, we can look into this conflict management so as we establish certain boundaries up front before all the teams or the groups, we must include, we must keep three things in our mind. What are the three things in our mind? Personal, confidential, trust. Personal, confidential, trust. These are the three things that we need to keep in mind when we set the boundaries. How? Reminding everyone in the group or even ourselves that the conflict is not personal. What we need to remind, the conflict is not personal. Now, the second one, asking everyone to keep the discussion, whatever has been discussed, confidential. This is something that every leader should have these qualities. And the third point is trust. Trusting everyone to manage their emotions and not make it as an outburst or a Hurtful remarks should be very careful. We need to trust and handle our emotions well. So in some cases, the conflict may simply be too emotional to address. So if you are very afraid of retaliation or if there's any discrimination or if there's any inappropriate situation, it may help us to have a third person to come in to address it. Because in such situation, if only the two people are, uh, are, are uh, part of this conflict, it may burst. So depending on the situation, as a leader, be wise enough to have somebody part of it so that it does not the conflict does not grow bigger but it solves the problem. It becomes neutral. And the third person, whoever's part of this, will be neutral, seeking the complete story, hearing out both the person and coming out with a clear suggestion. So this is very important. And not uh, the neutral person should not take any sides, but hear out both the person and give a solution to that conflict. So when we do that, there are five ways to manage the conflict resolution strategies. We're going to look at the first one is accommodating. So the accommodating style is commonly seen when you know people want to be as unassertive or um, cooperative, whereas not every conflict need to be a war so conflict worth accommodating are those battles that are strategically lost to win the war for example uh, when there's a time when you might accommodate a colleague or a customer when they complain about a process but not an outcome so in this we need to see what is it so for, for example, if a colleague would have asked for a report, but she has not given in detail what format the report needs to be delivered. 
So if a colleague just delivers it in a PDF format, you don't have to get upset. Why did she do it? Instead of giving me in an Excel format, she has given it to me in a PDF. The first point is, OK, I didn't ask for the format. Let me take the report as it is. Or is it a way that before I could head to a meeting, can I change the format from a PDF to Excel in exactly the way I want it? If you can do it, that actually makes it much better. But if you're very particular about the format and you crit so much about it, make sure that you give certain instruction before and hand to avoid those unnecessary circumstances arise. Okay, so we need to be accommodating when we don't make things clear to the other person. We cannot expect the other person to say it is a common sense that this report needs to be delivered in this format. You know, maybe each one coming from a different background, each way get to work differently. So we need to be understanding and accommodating. Now, the second point is avoiding. Avoiding. The avoiding conflict strategy is well reserved. For individuals who are more inclined to be unassertive and uncooperative during the time of conflict. Generally, this is, an, uh, uh, this is a very pathetic approach because people who adopt this strategy want no parts of the conflict would rather want it to be blown over. So this strategy is best for small annoyance, like one of mistakes and issues that could otherwise be worsened by addressing it. For example, a conflict you might avoid in the workplace when someone drinks the last of the water from the water cooler without even replacing the container. You don't have to get irritated, so just avoid that problem. So you see if you can just replace the other water can, the cooler, if it's just one time issue. Or if you see that repeatedly happening, call everyone, addresses, address this out so that the person is much more aware when the water is finished and he is the last person, we just replace the water can. But as much as possible, we just Avoid it. But then by avoiding does not solve the problem. If it's only one time, it's OK. But if it's going to be a repetitive task with that, then you see how you can resolve it. It's better for you to call out the team, talk about it, and see how we can avoid such problem coming up, arising up again and again. Now, the third one is collaborating. Third point is collaborating. So if um, if we want to keep a relationship together in that and find a solution that works for better for everyone, try the collaborative style of a conflict solution. So how do we do it? So this strategy is both. We see it as cooperative and assertive, which means that all the group or all the team can be heard and the solution that is Chose to work well for everyone. See what works better. Keeping everyone in mind. Being thoughtful. So this is very important, especially when we are in a group, when we work in a group, when we work in a team. It can be any setup, ministry, workplace. So keeping everyone, the goodness, the goodness of everyone so that we work together in a collaborative way. So if there's a crisis, if there's an issue, you see what works better. So how do we work this out? You need to work it out collaborative. So how? By not one person taking a decision and solving it? No. In this case, you call, the, you call complete team members. It can be in a ministry, we have different teams. Even at workplace, we will have different teams, various teams. Now, each team will think for their own good. They may not think what works well for the other team. So the, in collaborating way, we call out for all the team members and try to discuss it out. 
So what works better with team A, team B and team C and what is good for all of us? Then we come out with a solution that is good for everyone. So it works out in a win-win situation for all the team and, and good for everyone. So that is one of the collaborative methods. Uh, point four is competing. Competing. So in this, we see that assertive and uncooperative, the competing conflict style is an intense approach to resolving grievance. So it's not an uncommon uh, for a competing conflict resolution strategy to heal the positive outcome for one group uh, and a negative outcome for another. So this strategy isn't one to make new friends, to take it lightly. So we might see a competing conflict management strategy used when negotiating deals. So this is not a good one for us to follow in our ministry, in our workplace. But competing strategy may work well for the lawyers at the court, like how a lawyer may use this strategy to get the best uh, legal outcome for their client at the expense of the other party. So a competing strategy works well there in that setup, but not for us in our ministry setup or in our workplace. Maybe in the workplace when there's uh, uh, when they compete with the team with different companies, okay, that may again be a bit aside. But when we talk about our ministry, a church setup, competing does not appear very well for us because we don't compete with others at this God's kingdom. Yes, we can say we compete with ourselves, but we are better. We are growing each day better in our own self, but we don't compete with others. Okay, now the fifth point is compromising. Compromising. So we see here people tend to compromise during conflicts when they are assertive and cooperative in you know getting a solution. So this strategy actually one way it is good so that we just get to compromise and come out of this situation. So compromising is something, a skill, not that, you know, uh, letting yourself down or uh, not by proving the other person is right or wrong. Compromising is something that we tend to look into this place is not allowing the conflict to go, but saying, Lord, you be my defender and I want to bring a stop for this conflict or this disagreement. Just be in peace with everyone or uh, check with others what solution is needed so that you know we can bring a solution and compromise with each other. So a team might compromise on a solution, come up with a solution. What would be the solution for this conflict? So as a leader, we need to set things in our mind. We should not allow the conflict to keep growing from one point to the other. But as a leader, you should immediately look out what's the solution that we can solve this problem and not allow it to grow. If the solution is just to compromise with another person, please go for and go ahead with it because you want peace within yourself. Okay, so manage and resolve conflict uh, like a pro is how uh, actually it is not very easy. But then when we pray, when we have uh, the mind of Christ in us, it becomes easy. And getting this mind of Christ as a leader, we need to have it. Every time you face a conflict, take it to the Lord and pray. Only then handling the conflict in the way Christ wanted it to be, only then it will be easy for us. If not, handling conflict is not easy. Addressing it out, um, you know, in a godly manner is not that very easy. But then when we invite God, when we ask the Holy Spirit to 
give us that strength to maintain the relationship above everything else. Give us the understanding. You know, uh, it's a very nice, uh, uh, there's one song. Just give me a minute. I, I just remembered. Okay, I'll just read this song. I just cut this here. This is a song written by Francis of Assisi. Okay, um, again, he was also a ministry leader. We will, I'm sure you would have studied about Francis of Assisi in Christian history and missions, how the Desert Fathers, you know, moved in, uh, you know, certain period of time with prayer and with love toward the people during the dark ages. So here we have, he has written the song in a very uh, well manner. I'll just read this out. He says, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there is doubt, true faith in you. Again, he says, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there is sadness, ever joy. O oh, Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love with all my soul just give me a minute while i have it here let me post it on the chat so that we all can get to Okay, so it says, um, make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. What does it mean when he says in dying? It's nothing but the scripture says when you die to yourself, you are actually born to eternal life. This is what Jesus did. He taught us if you want to be the leader, then serve. You need to die to yourself for you to be born. If you take up a wheat seed, it needs to die itself for it to give birth and grow. Here again in the next paragraph, we see that, oh master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled. Okay, it's the same thing. Very, very beautiful song this is. As a leader, he had this practice in his lifestyle. And we seek this. So this is something that we can look into when it comes to conflict management. What happens is most of the time we put ourselves first. We give the priority to ourselves, our feeling, our understanding. But then what the scripture says, put the other person first. Consider other person's request first. As much as possible, live in peace. You know, these are some important scriptures that I have put for conflict management. Matthew 18, 5 to 17. Are you able to see what I'm seeing? Yeah. Yes, Pastor, we can see. Okay, great. So Matthew 18, 15 to 17 says, If your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you. This is what we discussed in the other party along so that that person may be you here, both the sides, that every charge may be established by evidence of two or three witnesses if he refuses to listen to them. Tell it to the church, take it to the higher authority. Why should he do that? Again, again, it says, if he refuses to listen, even to the church, let him be to you a Gentile and a tax collector. Okay, that part we leave it depending on those days. But in our time, 
let's apply to our time. If we take to the chair, that is, why are we escalating it to the other person? That means we are striving for peace. Hey, I'm not able to talk to my brother to bring an understanding. Ask an elder to intervene, the third person. If he's not able to understand even the third person, let me take it to the church leader so that I am in peace with my brother. I want this relationship. It's nothing but trying hard to be at peace. Do what it takes to be at peace. It's not, it's just not our brother. It's not about our brother alone, but it can be anyone in a relationship. And Ephesians 4, 31, 32 says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from us, along with all malice. Why? Because these are the things that may bring strife between us. So when we put away all this, we have kindness, gentleness, the fruit of the Spirit within us. So we can be kind to one another with tender heart and forgiving one another as God and Christ forgave us. Very, very important. So when we have this in our mind, we will not voice out our opinion, our idea, or, or uh, you know, for our side of point of view. With all humility, we will say, okay, fine, brother, let's go with what you say. Allow the time to bring an understanding to the opposite person. Proverbs 15, 1 says, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word strikes up anger. So it is very important for us to have a calm tone, understanding the other person, and speak well. The sweet answer is very important. Matthew 5, 9 says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Because you are the child of God, you should be peaceful to everyone. Not only when, the, when you are part of the conflict, even if, if you see any others having a dispute between themselves, you be the peacemaker because you are the child of God. Speak peace, release your peace. Even if the conflict is happening elsewhere in different state, different country, when you hear the uh, news about it, Let's be the prayer warrior. This is what God is calling each of us. When we pray, God intervenes. Ephesians 4.26, we see that be anger and do not sin. Okay, we, we got into that. Luke 6.27 says, but I say to you here, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. So this is what the scripture says, do not do not do evil to evil, but evil for good. Proverbs, it also says, you know, love your enemies, do good to them. Do good to them in such a way that, you know, that they change, their heart gets transformed. And Ephesians 4, 2 to 3 says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Very important to be humility and have this fruit of the spirit as attributes within us because the God who dwells in us, is. this is what he expects each of us to do, to be the reflection of them. So we should be the peacemaker of God himself. So with that, uh, we end this session and I request one of us to please uh, and the session of the word of prayer. Can I request a please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Father God, we are so very thankful to you once again, Father, for teaching us such beautiful words of life, Abba Father, that we would grow in being peacemakers, Lord Father, for you have given us the ministry of reconciliation and you are the Prince of Peace, Abba Father. As we as we learn more about it, Father, help us to bring peace in ourselves and in situations and in circumstances around us. And whatever we are learning, we are so very thankful to you for all the wisdom and 
all the understanding that your word gives us day after day. We thank you for Pastor, who is teaching us with so much love and patience. We bless her in the name of Jesus, and we bless all the classmates, all the students, uh, to walk in this peace which which you give us, Father, and the world cannot take it, Father. Once again, we thank you for bringing us all together this morning, for all the blessings of life, your favor, your grace and mercy. And we ask this prayer in the precious and matchless name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you each one for joining. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, thank you very much, Nan. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.